coming up on five minutes until airtime. Mark, five minutes until airtime on the UCLA Sports Network from Learfield IMG College for our basketball game broadcast. Your next time cue will be with four minutes until airtime. Why did I choose to go to UCLA? First and foremost, when you say you've got a degree from UCLA, it, it carries some weight. I learned a standard of excellence. I knew that it would be the biggest challenge of my life. You know, it's something special, and it's known worldwide. In the same place where you can be with people that could be leading the world, you are also with people that could be professional athletes and Olympians. And so for me, uh, it was really, truly getting the best of both worlds. Just the opportunity to be able to walk around and say you're a brewer, I think it goes a long way in this world. When I look back and I see the impact that it had on me and now going forward, the relationships that I've been so fortunate to, uh, to cultivate and to have and establish because of my ties to UCLA are, are endless and I'm forever grateful. You got an alumni base that will uh, take care of you and, and, and help you out for the rest of your life as, as connected throughout the world. The opportunity to come to UCLA is so special. All the people I've met, I've met the most amazing people that really are in my corner. I've never uh, regretted at any point um, attending UCLA. many ways to become champions, but in the Pac-12, we understand most victories are celebrated in silence. A simple pat on the back without the rain of confetti, a high five with a teammate, not screaming fans, in the classroom, at the library, another week of exams. This is the Pac-12, where leadership in academics and athletics launches success in life. It's what makes us the Conference of Champions.
lead the marquee game in the nation tonight. Four and one UCLA and four and one Marquette. It's just the third meeting ever between these two successful and famous programs. Josh Lewin with Bruins legend Tracy Murray. Nice to have you here. And Tracy, this is the truest test the Bruins may face out of conference. They failed the test right as the bell rung to start the school day, so to speak. They got manhandled by San Diego State. That was without Jalen Hill and Johnny Juzang. Well, those guys are now healthy, and if indeed that makes a difference that we think it does, now we'll see who the Bruins really are against a tough, battle-tested, athletic Marquette team has traveled out of here from Milwaukee. Absolutely. This is almost like a repeat of the San Diego State game because of similar play. Physical defenses. Get up in, you make you feel uncomfortable. Long athletic players. Um, pretty much a carbon copy. So I, I look forward to seeing the Bruins here at full strength and see how they match up with Marquette and see how the game comes out. And let's look back first before we preview this enormous game tonight. The Bruins taking care of things Wednesday here in Westwood. A University of San Diego team shaking off the rust was no match for UCLA. The Bruins stumbled a bit out of the gate, but then they raced away to win by 27. Five and double figures led by the Camarillo kid, Jaime Jaquez Jr. Not only had a game-high 17 points, but he had the most blocked shots of any Bruin in a game in three years. And remember, he's only six foot six. Right, excellent game by the Bruins and the Hawkeyes, and, and everybody finally got it together. Probably around the 10-minute mark is when everything started moving in the right direction. Uh, you can't afford to start off slow against Marquette. You can't allow them to get a lead. Um, maybe against the San Diegos of the world, you can. But but this game, you can't allow them to get out there in front and, 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 and play with a big lead. Well, Tiger Campbell in that game had 12 points. He had as many rebounds as assists, surprisingly. That little running floater in the lane has been money for him the last couple games, much the way he found that shot towards the end of Pac-12 conference play last February and March. Well, he's playing like a vet. Um, he, he's gained a lot of experience being on the floor as much as he was last year. Uh, I think the first couple of games was just getting his legs up underneath him, uh, nerves of, uh, of a beginning of another season. Uh, but he looks like a seasoned vet out there, and he's been playing extremely well. How about the Bruin Bigs? It was a quiet night from Cody Riley, but then you looked up and saw he had a double-double. 11 points, 10 rebounds in his 20 minutes. The other Bruin power forward, Jalen Hill, 20 minutes, and he came off the bench for 7 points, 10 rebounds. So combine the two, that's 18 points, 20 rebounds. That's a nice total to have from that one position by the end of the game. That might have been the first time both of them played pretty well together in the same lineup because normally one is doing well and the other one's not. So uh, that's the first time you saw both of them really uh, step their levels up together, and hopefully they can do that moving forward. Chris Smith, Mr. Enigma, uh, somehow only took five shots. He did get to the free throw line six times, but it was another one of those games, Trace, where he was very rarely the aggressor. And I know USD paid a lot of attention to him defensively, and yes, he found a way to get to 12 points on just those five shots, but... In theory, don't you want the supposed best player on the team, conference player of the year candidate, finding a way to take more than five shots against a team like San Diego? Well, you want them to lead. And I, I think against San Diego, you're not worried about it as much. If that happens against Marquette or San Diego State, now you start worrying because you need your, your best players to lead, especially in big games. Small games, everybody's going to play well, including the guys at the end of the bench. Uh, so so the San Diego's I'm not worried about. The Marquettes, the San Diego States, the Kentuckys, that's when I worry about them. The other Bruins to talk about while we unpack from Wednesday night, only two points from Jules Bernard, only two from his roommate David Singleton, but two support players of note, I thought. Jake Kyman hit a couple pull-up jumpers. His mid-range game continues to improve. And the Johnny Juzang experience was as expected. He missed his first shot as a Bruin, but then he canned four of his next five. He had 10 off the bench, was a plus 20 in 19 minutes. So a lot to like about the transfer from Kentucky. Well, I'll tell you what, what's interesting with Coach Cronin's got to start making some decisions on is, you know, as Juzang becomes better and, and, and he's playing more and he's being efficient out there, it's, it's a good problem to have, to wonder who you're going to play more minutes um, when it comes down to those four players because Kyman is playing well. Jules had a couple of good games. Singleton's been kind of solid, but Juzang is the guy that they said has been lighting it up before he got hurt. So who are you? It's a good problem to have. That's the problem we used to have back in the day where your team was so loaded you can go to anybody. So that's a good problem to have. 
but some some guys are not going to be happy with their playing time if they don't step their levels up so when you added it all up the Bruins did have a rather convincing win a couple of days ago 83 to 56 but doubtful they get to 83 against the team they're playing here tonight big bad Marquette allows 63 a game on average we'll scout them out for you when we come back this is UCLA basketball on the UCLA Sports Network from Learfield IMG College at Westcom Credit Union, the official banking partner of UCLA Athletics, members come first in everything we do. UCLA, home of the Bruins. The nation's number one public university. 118 national championships. From the Pacific Ocean to Westwood. Where tomorrow's pros are developed today. And our mentality is a cut above. Trailblazers. Game changers. This is UCLA. Where champions are made. Elite is in our DNA. And it's time to join the Nike and Jordan family. It's time. Kevin Love, Men's Basketball 2008. Kevin Love spent a year with the Bruins Men's Basketball Program during the 2007-2008 season, helping UCLA take home a regular season Pac-12 Conference Championship, the Pac-10 Conference Tournament Championship, a number one seed in the 2008 NCAA Tournament, and secured a trip back to the Final Four. The consensus first team All-America and Pac-10 Player of the Year was selected fifth overall in the 2008 NBA Draft by the Minnesota Timberwolves, where he spent six seasons before joining the Cleveland Cavaliers. Love is a five-time NBA All-Star and captured an NBA championship in 2016 with the Cleveland Cavaliers. to support many important local causes. Throughout today's challenges and tomorrow's possibilities, our tribe will always be here for this community, honoring our history, celebrating our culture, building a brighter future for us all. Well, the Golden Eagles of Marquette have flown into Pauly tonight like the Bruins are four and one UCLA. Lost to San Diego State by 15, and Marquette to Oklahoma State by 7. One really good win for Marquette so far. They upset Wisconsin on a tip-in at the buzzer. And really, the Golden Eagles made key plays in that game because they're athletic. This might be the most athletic team the Bruins will face all season, Tracy. They've got size and length and strength and speed. they got Kobe McEwen averaging close to 17 a game. He can really shoot the three. They have some good players. Yeah, they do have some players. You said McEwen, uh, 16 and a half points a game, 4.2 rebounds shooting 50 percent from the floor, floor and 43 from three uh dawson uh garcia 58 percent from three uh jamal kane 38 percent from three justin lewis 57 percent from three their top four guys are shooting 44 percent i mean 45 percent combined from three-point range so you, you really have to watch those guys on the penetration and pitches and in the rhythm three-point shots. Another thing is the reason why they lost that game to Oklahoma State, they had 24 turnovers, so they're a high turnover team. If you can get up in them and make them uncomfortable and make them turn the ball over, you have a chance of beating this team. you got to stay physical, though. You mentioned Dawson Garcia, who I think is an NBA player for sure. He reminds you a bit of what USC runs through here, seems like, year after year. Maybe more Benny Boatwright than Chemeze Metu mm -hmm. in that regard, because he can step out and, and hit that three. But, you know, Marquette, man-to-man -man defensive team. The Eagles probably don't play it as well as the Bruins do, and the Bruins are really operating well and, and playing 40 good minutes of defense. So that's always a concern. Right? Can they play 40 good minutes of defense and not 15 or 20? Right, but if you look at a Marquette, that's a, you know, Wojo is not going to allow them not to play defense. So they're known to be physical. They're known to ha uh, be great defenders. If you look traditionally with Marquette, you got Jimmy Butler, you got Dwayne Wade, you got those type of players. And it's, it's like 
you know, you got uh, Crowder. Uh, uh, Jay Crowder, Jay yeah. Crowder. So you, that's the type of player that's known to come through Marquette. And, well, and that's the type of player that you're going to be facing tonight. And it's a fun matchup historically because these are two programs with such a winning pedigree. The Bruins, of course, with the 11 national titles. Marquette, 10 fewer than that. But they had the great Al McGuire as their coach for so long. Yep. A more colorful version of Coach Wooden, although not nearly as successful. Far fewer references to pyramids. Uh, essentially, <laughs> these are two blue blood basketball programs with famous longtime coaches and a funnel of terrific talent that's come through campus. Did Maurice Lucas go there? Yeah, there's, I mean, you go back all the way if you want to, and that's, that's fine. I mean, that's a great place to start. I mean, Jim Jones, the guy who used yeah. to play for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah, the and the Lakers. Butch Lee, all those guys. So, you know, more than that, uh, recently, I look at a guy like Marcus Howard for them, who can not only play defense, but score. These guys have been in 16 sweet 16s in their history. They've been in three Final Fours. They play in a highly competitive Big East. It's just kind of, it, it's like the, the high tide raising all ships, right? I mean, when a program like this steps into your arena, you just kind of feel like it's a big deal, you know? It is a big deal. I mean, and, and we're talking about controlling the paint. I think that's always a key. Uh, they get six steals a game, but they get five block shots a game. So, I mean, they're long, they're athletic. Um, the Bruins have their work cut out for them, and, and they have to be up for the challenge tonight. The current day Marquette coach you mentioned, Steve Ojahowski, a Coach K disciple at Duke, and, and like Mick Cronin, preaching defense first. Marquette, best in the Big East right now in field goal percentage defense and scoring defense. And that all makes sense because Wojo was, was the ACC Defensive Player of the Year three times. Yeah, uh, no, no question. I mean, and he expects his team to take on the mentality of, of him, of himself. That's what every coach wants out of their team. Uh, at, at the same time, you know, you got these guys that, that walk around with a chip on their shoulder all the time. Those people who go to Marquette, they're tough. They have a chip on their shoulder. So the Bruins have to make sure they match their intensity and, and their physicality. One smudge on Marquette's scouting report before we go to break. The former Warriors, now the Golden Eagles, they come in with uh, only 73 assists in five games. It's a pretty low total. They've got 73 turnovers mm -hmm. in five games, which is a high total. And you mentioned they turned it over 24 times and they lost Oklahoma State. I'd like to think if the Bruins can force them into something close to that tonight, they may actually be okay. We'll talk to Coach Cronin about that in just a few minutes. Our scoreboard update on the other side of a timeout. Pete McCarthy standing by. This is Bruins basketball on the UCLA Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Hey, UCLA fans. Have you heard Heard what the helpful SoCal Honda did. Chris Smith jumps it up against Yawan Masalski and the Toreros will control the tap. Hawkins, and now Singleton leading Hawkins. He'll jam it in two-handed, a pretty pass from Singleton. Singleton will drive, spin, turn around, go up and under. Heron, his bank shot is in. Here's Hawkins, fakes a three, gives it up to Juzang, who can certainly take a three. He'll try one now, on its way. Good! And the Bruins have the lead. Now starts to drive, kicks way out between the rings to Smith, hoisting a pass to Kaiman. He'll drive to the elbow, turn around, Fade away, fire, and hit it again, Jake Kyman. There it is. Kyman has been working on his game. Lobbing low to Hill. Holds down near his left hip. Now he'll turn, he'll drive, he'll spin, go up and under with the left hand, and score it off the window. Nice patience by Jalen Hill. Hawkins cutting to the hoop. Hands it off to Smith. Drives it out to Campbell. And he'll pull up. A leaner from 10 is good with a swish. The counter shots are the ones that's going to be open. Juzang hands it off to Campbell. Bounce pass down court. Here's Hawkins. He'll go one on two. A runner in the lane goes home. And that's being patient. Let the defender fly by and then put the ball in the basket. Who Juzang, Juzang a leaner. He hits it and he's fouled. Johnny Juzang is being heard from in his first game as a Bruin. Dribble at the top of the key. Giving to Hawkins. He'll kick it out. Campbell. An open three. Rainbow's in from the corner. That's going to do it from here at Pauley. Our final UCLA 83, San Diego 56.
to get you caught up on scores and storylines from across college basketball. Brought to you by Westcom Credit Union, the official banking partner of UCLA Athletics. The best bank for you may not be a bank at all. Visit ucla.westcom.org to learn how Westcom can help you build a better life. To the Learfield IMG College Network Studios, here's Pete McCarthy. UCLA getting set to host Marquette at Pauley Pavilion, presented by Westcom. It is 15 minutes to tip off, presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. To the Pac-12 scoreboard presented by Westcom, and UCLA is the only active team in the conference tonight. Last night, though, Arizona State became the second Pac-12 school to lose to San Diego State, 80-68 to the final. That was on the Sun Devils' home floor. UCLA lost at San Diego State earlier this year. And Oregon State was stunned by Portland in overtime, 87-86. The Pilots also topped the Beavers back in 2016. Pretty amazing considering Portland has only seven wins in the West Coast Conference over the past four years, yet they've knocked off Oregon State twice. Top 25, fifth-ranked Kansas destroys Omaha, 95-50. Number eight, Creighton takes down in-state rival Nebraska, 98-74. Ninth-ranked Villanova over Georgetown, 76-63. Number 11, West Virginia tops North Texas, 62-50. And an in-state rivalry just a couple of minutes in. Third-ranked Iowa ahead of Iowa State, 9-2. Football, Arizona State is destroying Arizona. They took the opening kickoff back for a touchdown, and they haven't looked back. It is 42-7, Arizona State over Arizona. They are a few minutes in to the third quarter. Remember, tomorrow the victory bell will be won as UCLA hosts number 15 USC kickoff at 4.30 right here on the UCLA Sports Network. The Bruins, they can do some damage. They can knock the Trojans out of the Pac-12 championship game with a win combined with a victory for Colorado taking on Utah. Here from UCLA head men's basketball coach Mick Cronin coming up next. You're listening to Bruin Game Day on the UCLA Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Fans, we're all so sad that you can't be here with us in person, but be sure to keep up that energy from home to support your Bruins. Let's keep that Bruins spirit going with an eight clap. Oh, oh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you. I coined my own definition of success, which is peace of mind and knowing you made the effort to do the best of which you're capable. The Bruins won 88 games and did what no team had done before. At center, the player of the year, if not all time, Louis Alston. It begun to crumble under the relentless attack of the Bruins and Bill Walton. He told Coach John Wooden and says he's so smooth. He's those quick hands. What this guy can't do. Three win their fourth and great fifth consecutive match. G2A Tanner, number 11. Coach McCronin joining us right now. The Bruins set to take on Marquette. A really, really interesting assignment tonight, which we'll get into in just a moment. Mick, if you don't mind, let me go back just a couple nights ago. 
You guys are taking care of business, I guess. Again, San Diego is a good way to, to explain that. Uh, five guys in double figures. A lot of good stuff from Tiger Campbell. W what are your takeaways from what happened a couple nights ago? Well, it's always good to get out there and play because, you know, you can make mistakes. You can show the film and learn from it. Uh, you can do, and you can do good things, show the film, and talk about that as well. Whenever you win by 27, uh, you get a chance to play against another team. It's going to help you. And, you know, you, you got to win and learn. Uh, that, that's what I told the guys. You gotta, but you got to continue to improve. You, you know, that we're, that's the game we're supposed to win. Uh, we, we have better players, deeper, uh, and, and really about our athleticism and our, our multiple uh, guys that we kept bringing at them off the bench was going to eventually wear them down. Let me steer you back to your point guard for a moment. I just want to shout out Tiger Campbell because he's got 17 assists against one turnover in the last two games, obviously making some good decisions, and that little floater in the lane has been going home for him too. Well, he's playing well. You know, people are trying to stay at home on our shooters, and uh, and it's kind of a strategy thing where they're kind of giving him that shot. Uh, and as long as they do, he's going to keep beating them with it. So, uh, you know, he does a great job when he takes his time and plays with pace. Uh, he, he's tremendous. So he's got to make sure he continues to do that and picks his spots, uh, and uh, does a great job taking care of the ball for us, Josh. And so, uh, you, you know, like, as you know, the more uh, he d grew and developed last season, the better our team uh, got last year, and I think it's going to be a, pretty similar this year. It's an interesting battle of uh, Iowa bred and born point guards tonight. Their guy uh, is pretty good, too. Is that one of the matchups you're looking at tonight against Marquette? Uh, Carton's a good player. Yeah, I know he was a high-rated guy. I think he's trying to find his way in Marquette's system right now. Uh, but they got a lot of other guys, Josh. If you were to ask me, I would tell you the, their size on the front line and their rebounding is my biggest concern tonight. You know, that and then Kobe McEwen's are uh, a fifth-year senior for them. It's just his time to shine. He played with Marcus Howard the last few years. Very good player. He can make baskets on his own. But their physicality is something that uh, we haven't seen since the San Diego State game. Concern of mine tonight. So, in a way, do you put a little bit more on this game as a coach and as a coaching staff because of the opponent? I mean, Marquette, and you know Coach Wojciechowski very well. You know how they play, their attention to detail and defense. This is a game that I think is a, a statement game for one of you guys tonight. Whoever wins or gets to kind of pound their chest a little bit, right? Yeah, no, to answer your question, at the beginning, do we put more on this game than, than we did San Diego or Cal? No, absolutely not. You know, to me, if you're not preparing with everything you got for every game, uh, not going to last long in our business. Uh, so, you know, it, it obviously, uh, as you win, the games get bigger, right? Because you're trying to climb the ladder, there's more on the line. But you can only take them one at a time, and you got to embrace the process and the preparation that goes in. Uh, into the game, but I understand what you're saying. Obviously, Marquette's a Big East team. Great opportunity tonight, but uh, we'll give everything we got in our preparation, but uh, we did the same thing for San Diego. And finally, Coach, how has it been so far just in general adapting to this new normal, which hopefully is not normal for too much longer, but <laughs> the piped-in the piped crowd noise and, and kind of having to bring your own energy, or are the guys getting there with all that? Uh, it's, I don't think anybody's ever going to get used to it, Josh. I really don't. Um, you know, I, I think what, what, what the guys are probably just got to a point where they're realizing, hey, we're, you know, we're playing the game for us, right? You know, it's better. Our, our, the, it's obviously be a lot more fun if, if it was normal, but the alternative is not play. And I promise you, these guys want to play. And from a mental health standpoint, uh, they need to play. Uh, you know, this is their entire lives. They've worked their whole lives to be at UCLA in the position they're in now. Um, so, you know, they're dealing with it as best they can, just like every other kid uh, around the country that's playing in empty arenas. All right. Well, keep at it. Go get them. Fun battle tonight. And we'll, we'll talk to you after, hopefully after a W. Thank you, Coach. All right. We'll see you. Thanks, Josh.